Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about sight picture and sight alignment and some thoughts I have on that and how they relate to shooting fast and accurately. So when we talk about sight picture and sight alignment, we're talking about the actual way the sights appear to us and how they're lined up with the target that we're aiming at. Now, there's some things to think about when we think about this. And this is a little bit different than how some people look at this, but I want you to think about this this way. There's actually several categories of things that we're manipulating here, several variables. One is our focal plane. What our eyes are actually focused on, if we're focused on the front sight, if we're focused on the target, are some intermediary distance between the two. Your eyes work like a camera, a camera lens. You can only physically focus on one thing crystal clear and sharp one given distance at a time. And that's an important thing to remember. The next thing is attentiveness. What is our mind focused on? Because what we're paying attention to mentally doesn't have to be the same thing that we're focusing on physically with the camera lens that's our eyes. So we have our focal plane and we have our attentiveness. So in other words, we have our visual focus and our mental focus. And then the last variable that we're going to think about is the actual physical alignment and relationship between the front sight, rear sight, and the target, or between the dot and the target. So those are the three things we're going to think about when we think about sights. Now, everyone I'm sure has heard the classic prescription for a good sight picture, right? Which is the front post centered and level in the rear notch, the front sight crystal clear and sharp in our visual focus, rear sight blurry, target blurry. That's what everyone's taught that as a beginner, right? That's where we all start out at. And there's nothing wrong with this as a starting point. And it's also a good default for extreme precision shots, but there's so much more to this than just that. What typically happens with law enforcement, military, and defensive-minded shooters is that we default to that original sight prescription regardless of the difficulty of the shot. And the reasons why we do that make sense. We have it hammered into us from the very beginning that we're accountable for every shot fired. And that's true, that is correct. But that crystal clear, equal height, equal light sight picture, or in the case of a dot, that absolutely stable dot, exactly in the center of the acceptable scoring area on the target, for many shots, that's more than we need. And we're limiting ourselves on our speed and not gaining any more accuracy than we actually would. So let's examine the variables we just talked about and talk about what we can get away with for different difficulties of shots. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is our scoring area, right? I like to think of scoring area as basically three different things. You have optimal, acceptable, and unacceptable. Right? So in a self-defense situation, your optimal, your, your best result possible is about a fifth size group in the high center chest or about the size of an index card right about here with just a little T shape coming down, right? That's your optimal. Those are the best results you can get. But what is acceptable? So let's look at the body. If our optimal is this fifth size group in the high center chest, our acceptable is actually pretty large for the torso, right? We're gonna get some good results from there, not the best results, but good ones. What's our unacceptable? Our unacceptable is the edges of the torso. Because we don't know if the torso is even gonna stop a shot that skims off the edges, right? So that's unacceptable. Obviously, off the target, off the torso is unacceptable as well. Now the head, we have our optimal area right here and pretty much nothing else in the head is acceptable, right? Nothing else there is gonna work. So you can see the difference when you look at different kinds of targets for what is optimal, acceptable, and unacceptable. You have to take that into account when you're choosing how refined you want your sight picture and sight alignment to be for a particular shot. So let's talk about the variables I went over. So the first one is our focal plane, right? We're taught in the beginning, I'm gonna grab my training aid from uh, trainingsites.com here. 
we taught in the beginning, front sight, front sight, front sight, right? We have to focus on that front sight. That's simply not true. There are people who shoot target focused with iron sights with great success out as far as 50 yards. Now, how far you can do that for a distance and a shot difficulty is gonna be something you have to experiment with and find out. But not having to move your focal plane both makes things faster physically and it makes them faster mentally because there are less details you have to concern yourself with. So as far out as you can shoot target focused, I would highly recommend doing so because it's better for you as a shooter, right? You'll be faster and just as accurate if you learn to shoot target focused. Because the thing about this is, these can be blurry and your brain can still be aware of their relationship to the target and their relationship to each other. You just have to train yourself to do so. Now, when you're running a dot, the focal plane never changes anyway. When you're running a dot, the focal plane is always on the target, which drastically simplifies things. It's one of the advantages of having an optical sight on your pistol. So that's variable number one. If I'm shooting at a target this large and this close, how much confirmation do I need on my sights? None, right? My physical alignment alone is good enough for here. If I'm shooting the same target from, say, right here, right, depending on my skill level, it may still be none. It may just be the index that I've developed through my training. But if I haven't developed that to a high enough level, grab my firearm here. If I haven't developed that index yet to a high enough level, do I need to see my front and rear sight or the dot at this distance, regardless of skill level? No. If I bring the firearm up and just center the shape of the firearm in my acceptable scoring area, I will get good hits. I don't have to actually confirm with sights at all from here. Now, obviously, as you move further out, you need more and more confirmation with your sights to get an acceptable hit. And this is something you have to experiment with in your own training, right? This is really important. This is that second variable we talked about. So the precision you need for your alignment of the sights and your alignment of that sight picture with the target changes drastically based on the target difficulty. Learning what you can get away with is how you become faster while maintaining the same accuracy. If I'm at seven yards and I'm shooting iron sights, so let me get this lined up for you right, training sights. So if I'm at seven yards and I'm shooting iron sights, this obviously is good sight alignment for me. Guess what though? So is that, so is that, so is that, and so is that. To get an acceptable hit at seven yards, I simply don't have to clean up the sight picture that much. If I'm running a dot, at seven yards, I don't have to have this dot perfectly still. Now, if it is, that's fine. It's going to work. But this dot can simply be a streak inside the acceptable scoring area, and I know it's going to be okay. It's a question of precision of your sight picture, right? That second variable. You need to learn what you can get away with for different target difficulties. And bear in mind, it's not just distance. A partial target is drastically more difficult than an open target at the same distance. This is why you need to shoot a wide variety of target difficulties in your training so that you get that data. You collect all those data points and see what you need to have to make a particular shot. So, so far we've got the first two variables, right? We've got our focal plane and we have the precision of our sight alignment and sight picture. Now let's talk about the other variable for a minute, right? And that's our mental focus. Not the physical camera focus of our eyes, but where is our brain focused? And this actually is the key to being able to shoot target focused with iron sights. So I can have my focal plane on the target. The target is crystal clear in my vision, but my mental focus is still on 
lining up those sights and making sure that I have what I need to have to make that shot. So learning to differentiate, learning to separate your physical focus, your camera focus that your eyes have from what you're mentally focused on is the key to making this work. Once you get that figured out, all you have to do is collect enough data to know what you need to have, the input you need to get from your sights for any particular shot in order to make it as fast and accurately as possible. Those are my thoughts on your sights. I hope you enjoyed it. See you all on the range soon.